Welcome to East by West Farms. Here we grow what we eat and eat what we grow. Today I will show you what we can do in the garden after a deep freeze. Here we say, if you don't like the weather in Texas, wait until tomorrow. We had a few nice days of fall and then winter hit us. Some years we are able to grow peppers all the way through winter, but not so this year. The winter storm of a generation hit us hard. What should have been our supply of fresh vegetables during winter completely turned into mush. Haying spent a lot of time preparing the garden and seeding winter hardy vegetables. But we got hit by a deep freeze down into the 20s. This kind of temperature is very unusual for Texas. But this is the second time we got that low temperatures in the last three years. Maybe this will be our new normal winter weather. The garden was striving before the freeze hit. Everything was growing, it was green and it didn't look like winter at all. But now the garden smells like death. But we farmers are a resilient bunch. Setbacks are part of daily life. We pick ourselves up by our shoestrings and adapt to an ever-changing environment. We are not in control of our weather, but we are in control of our destiny. So now is the time to take inventory, evaluate what can be salvaged and turn a bad situation around. In front of me is um, a completely blackened um, flower beans and uh, there are lots of plants that look like they are dead. But sometimes you just don't know. A lot of time when the freeze hit and it dries out the roots and then the dryness actually kills the plant, not necessarily the freeze. This year, fortunately, we had a lot of rain. It's been quite wet before the freeze hit. And when the um, freeze saw, I can see that the soil is still pretty moist. So I have hope that some of that pl this plant will survive. I can see some signs already. For example, the, the garlic is, even though the leaves are brown, but it starts to come out kind of a new shoot. Of course, the wheat didn't affect by the freeze at all. I wish I can eat this. They are all over the place. I also have some Hong Cai Tai that the leaves looks pretty bad, but I can see the center is coming back. We will have a week or so, I think, pretty warm temperature in the 60s, 70s. And so I don't want to disturb this plant. I will leave them on and see who will recover from the freeze and who will not. Ideally, I should clean out the dead ones and raise some seeds and let them grow. I don't want to pull out the seeds, the, the plants that have a chance to recover. So that means we need to do something else.
before the freeze heat, I kind of put some of the parts together. Some of them had the seeds in for stratification, and some actually have um, the young seedling like the green onions and carrots. I put them under the barn roof. I noticed that the barn roof, even though it's very tall, keep the temperature a few degrees high. So if it's like just above freeze outside, under the barn roof actually it's not freezing. I bundle all these plants together, then cover them with mulch that provide the the root and, and then the barn roof provide additional protection. For example, these carrot seeds actually survived and they didn't seem to have any freeze damage at all. And also the uh, green onion that even though it has some damage but look like even the seedling survived. What I'm going to do next is to seed more plants under the barn roof, so if the weather condition gets bad, we might still have some seedling that can survive under the barn roof. I have a few seed package in this tray over here. These are actually um, apple trees or apple seedlings that I it's not ideal, but I have to put them in soil because this is from the apples that we ate and that they were already sprouting inside the apple. The others are kind of uh, um, winter vegetable that can sprout in cool weather like the green onions, cilantro, I have some yellow peas. And uh, I have actually this one that I really would like to grow is the Chinese marrow seeds that uh, um, I like the green vegetable, you cannot buy it in US, so the only way you can get it is grow by yourself. And I also got some um, uh, wheat that are for sprouting, so I don't think I will seed this in the pot, but I probably will just broadcast in the prepared uh, bed. For the seedling um, in winter, I will not use the small pot, seedling pot, I will use this big pot. A few considerations. One is that I can put, leave the, in this pot longer, so in case um, there is a cold front come, I still have them in the pot instead of in this uh, tiny seedling pot that can um, get freeze easier. The soil I use is actually the compost. Now I can start to put in my apple seeds in there. I probably would put two per pot. Got some very much sprouted, and just cover them with soil, and then we're done. I got quite a few more seeds left, so look like we'll get about twenty apple trees in Texas. The spring is actually very short, so it may not have enough time for the seedling to set roots. So the best time to transplant the seedlings actually is in the fall. In winter, it's the best time actually to start the seedling. That way it will have time to establish in the pot and uh, you can grow them or protect them through summer. One thing we can do here is prepare new bed and get it ready for spring sowing. Usually we get lots of rain in the fall so the soil is moist and easy to dig. So I just prepared this 
patch in front of me because the soil is very dense so I use a fork to loosen it up and then I will just plant the fava beans here if we get good weather the fava beans will grow and uh, produce beans for us in addition to the fava beans I will also sprinkle some wheat in here I also want to build the seed bank for the spring so here I collected some of the native peppers I just cut it up and shake the berries off so when spring comes it will sprout and uh, give us the native pepper they are very resilient some squash plants, old squashes that have seeds in there and also some of the ground cherries that will basically decompose over here and then um, build up the seed bank for the spring sprouting. In this video, I showed you what we can do after a deep freeze. We have two deep freeze in the last three years. So this might be the norm for Texas and we may as well learn how to adapt to it. Most of the plants in the garden are cold hardy plants, so they might survive. We also want to additional security for fresh vegetables. So we seeded some of the winter hardy plants in the pot under the barn roof in case we get another deep freeze here, you never know. It's also a good time to think ahead. So now is a time to plan for a new garden area to put the seed bank done and get the soil condition so we have uh, abundant harvest for the fall. If you like this video, please give me a thumb up. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you have not done so, please hit the subscribe button to follow our journey with the East by West Farms.